So this 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 few few <laughs> slides I do remember, and I think I will just have to wait for a few seconds so that it, it, it makes a relevant uh, you are able to at least resonate with what I am trying to say. But can this first forward section of this site say one stakeholder for an internal auditor? Just name one stakeholder for it. Audit committee chairman. Okay, this side. Chief purchasing officer. Chief. Purchasing. Because they they were lent to us. Yes. Statutory auditors. Statutory auditors. Management. Management. So yeah, the chief purchasing officer, that is the CEO. CEO, yeah. Investors. Investor, shareholder. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's one set. And then obviously the audit committee chair who is sort of guiding us and governing us. Yeah, so fairly, I mean, you guys are here. If you would want to probably now do a little bit of uh, granular part here. I mean, this is this is core. You completely understood. Uh, audit chair is one because but the audit committee uh, is definitely one. Then we have uh, the CEO or the MD, because he's the one who sort of is oh, reflective. I mean, his performance is what is reflective. And then you have Hello? the senior managers or the management personnel or whichever function you are probably Hello? looking at. You're looking at the procurement to pay, and your purchase chief purchase officer, you're looking at HR, you're the chief people officer. Then there is one person who is your process owner also. Collaborator also, culprit also, victim also is the CFO. Okay. When you when you look at him, he, he needs to be looked at with a different lens as compared to let's say a chief officer or a chief marketing officer or a chief people officer or a chief IT officer. Yeah. Was I otherwise audible? So can I leave this if, if you guys are okay with it? No? Okay. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, so uh, this is just a basic and I only one to the Okay, okay. Okay, okay, no worries. Oh it's it's here, it's here. It's come here, so I'm presuming it can come there. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. So Okay, so uh, the slide which I'm going to say, I'm, I, will, I was about to put a picture and then uh, a name, uh, but I'm going to rail out a name and you guys will have to just probably show a raise of hand whether you have heard about that person. Narayan Murthy, okay. Nandan Nilankani, Vishal Sikka, lesser hands, Hasso Platner. Okay, so uh, Narayan Murthy, everyone knows, chairman of Infosys. Nandan Nelagini, you know, he was chairman of Infosys also, but at some point of time, he was also the managing director for uh, Infosys when Narayan Murthy was the chairman. Vishal Sikka was also the managing director for uh, Infosys when uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy was, was the chairman. Hasso Platner is to SAP what Narayan Murthy is for Infosys. He is one of the initial founder members who is also the uh, chairman of SAP. Now, what is now the link between the four of them is just the way Nandan Nelankani and Vishal Sikka were the managing directors of Infosys when Mr. Narayan Murthy was the chairman. Vishal Sikka has been the managing director for both SAP as well as Infosys at different points of time. And therefore, his relationship with Narayan Murthy as a stakeholder and Mr. Hasso Platner as a stakeholder was similar in their individual organization. Now, why I have brought this is also that if you would generally do a thing, and I'm not here in any way suggesting who is right or wrong, who is good or bad in any manner, Vishal Sikka was a super success at SAP, which 
probably was one of the reasons why he moved to Infosys also. However, he was perhaps not that big a success when it came to Infosys. Now, what does it mean? Both Hasso Plattner and Narayan Murthy, a similar kind of profile, the same guy is a successful somewhere and successful not somewhere. It is because the perspectives and perception of the same person also keeps varying or the same position also keeps varying. So, it's there. Oh, it's, it's coming there, not coming here only. Okay, okay, okay. So, you, I am presuming you can see these four photographs. Okay. Now, this is nowhere to say there is a stakeholder running after an internal auditor. This photograph is nothing related to that. Uh, I just could not find a similar uh, or a more relevant photograph for the story that I am telling you. This is a story about a person. Just give me a second. Okay, super. So this story is actually more about where there is a vicious dog which is running after and there are actually a couple, a husband and a wife and it is going and attacking them and the husband picks up the wife, lifts the wife and there is another couple passing by there and then the, the lady in the uh, other couple side says that look at this husband, he is so caring about his wife, you know the dog is coming to attack, he has lifted her so that the dog doesn't bite his wife and he is so protective and the husband says are bevkoof he is not protecting his wife he is lifting his wife to throw at the dog so that he is protected so the point again is that the same storyline same husband and wife are being perceived or the same as i mean a husband and a wife looking at the same scenario are looking at a situation very differently so as internal auditors also the basic fundamental thing is you will not have or we will not have a one size fits all you can't have a running shoe, climbing shoe, hiking shoes, cycling shoe and have it one. It has to be completely different. There is no one solution to handle a CFO. There is no one solution to handle audit committee chairman. It would vary. So therefore, my attempt will be, I'm trying to probably glean out what are some of the tips and tricks which could help us in our management, management of our stakeholders. So now, if we look at it, these are the IA stakeholders. You have the board, which we just spoke about. We have the managing director or CEO. We have a CFO. We have a senior management. And one important stakeholder I also forgot at that point of time is the process owner. Jiski supposedly hum pitai lagate hain. Jiske baare mein hum sab bura bolte hain. Aur jiska hum maximum time khate hain. We engage the maximum with him uh, per se. Now, if these are the IA stakeholders, and this is a smart auditor, if he goes and says, very typical, uh, every auditor in his life would have found it or definitely has this aspiration to find a instance of a double payment, or tell the pro or would have definitely given a double payment. Now imagine this auditor is actually going and trying to sell. This is my scope of accounts payable, and I'm going to identify duplicate payments for you. What is the CFO going to think? My house is already in a mess. Should I dig my own grave by inviting him? What is the senior management going to say? They say, I have so many other fights to fires to fight. What is it that this new double, I mean, my, my uh, supply chain is in a problem. My marketing is not happening properly. I am not having a good traction on sales. I need to give more discount. What is this double payment business? And the managing director says, what will the board think? Why can't my CFO sort this problem? Why do I need an internal auditor to come and speak to me? And the board is going to say, what is the big picture that your guys are going to talk to me about? What is the impact? So again, a same statement will have a very varying, uh, sorry, excuse me, very varying uh, reaction, which is what I'm trying to build up saying that everyone will have a different perception. And end of the day, agar aap dekho ge to, it is like, you know, you poor internal auditor who is in the center is sort of in a fix. Process owner would say, Jo problem hai, mujhe pata de, main theek kar deta hun. CFO will say, you just tell me, I will get it right, I will take care of my process owner. Board will say, tell me the big picture. <coughs> Managing director will say, okay, how do I improve my operating efficiencies? 
by doing this you are going to put a roadblock on my uh, freedom of the people whatsoever so we just spoke about the three lines but i'll just say because the relationship is important in all these things the three line of defense is basically that the line one is the person who's doing that activity let's say if you're talking about procurement it is a buyer who will do the right set of uh, activities to ensure that you buy the right quality, you buy the right quantity, you buy at the right price, you buy at the right time and you buy at a, from the right vendor. If you look at these, if you, if you yourself as internal auditors try to answer these five questions, your internal audit is done, which is what the buyer would also do. So he will ensure that he's taking the right set of quotes or whatever it is. Then there is this accounts person or a separate person who does the quality, who's like a second line of defense. Okay, while I told that I want a three-ply cardboard, when it comes, does the quality guy check it? If it is to be paid at four rupees a packet, have I paid at four rupees? Have I received 4,000 quantities, whatsoever, which is the second line of defense then is what we come as a third line of defense and all three of us have some way of reporting to the management or this thing. So now when we look at, see our primary stakeholder is the audit committee. End of the day, my CFO is happy, my managing director is happy, my process owners are happy, if the audit committee chair or the audit committee is not happy, it could also be the promoter in case it's like the promoter who is doing it, he is the one who should be happy. The primary thing when it comes to the audit committee is see the big picture. Now let me just show you a small picture. Assuming this box, this square is your audit universe. You have some 40, 50, 60, 300 like individual line items like payable, schemes, discounts, HR, finance, buying, purchase, receiving. Some, you, you, everyone has their own ways of putting an audit universe. So let's assume this is this represents your audit universe. And let's assume you do 50% of that areas every year. So that's, that's your audit plan for the year. And let's assume you do a fairly spread out, equally spread out. So this is 25% of that 50% which is your audit plan for that quarter. And let's assume we are, this company is a very bad company and we are great auditors. So therefore, 20% of the areas that we audit, we find high risk issues. Now just imagine, let's pause and think, 20% of areas that we check, we find high risk issues. That's honestly a wow for all of us. Now we are feeling great about it, but when we present to the audit committee, they see it like this. When we look at a promoter, they see it like this. This is fundamentally that we are very happy. We are very happy that we have found great 20% of our areas that we have checked. We have found the audit observation. We go and tell them, you know, your schemes and our schemes are not um, configured in the system correctly. Instead of 20%, you have ended up paying 25% or you made payments at 5 rupees when the order was for 4 rupees, whatever it is. But you are talking only about that 20% and in their mind they have a 40,000 crore company or a 20,000 crore company or an 8,000 crore company or whatever it is. Even if you were to sort of put the whole year together, this is how they see it. This is how they see it. So we need to understand what they are thinking. And so fundamentally it is very important that when we are managing the stakeholders, especially the audit committee, we need to look at some of the Key things like how do we present to them from a dashboard to scores or some sort of trends, how things are moving. Give a reference to the context and how do you look at core things continuity. I will give you one very classic example. In our audit committees in the last almost 16 or 20 audit committees in Titan that I have done uh, for Titan apart from the subsidiaries, we have learned now that it is okay. In quarter one, that issue was there, critical, and you probably told them or whatever it is. By quarter two, quarter three, when I say reference to the context, some theme is coming out saying that, listen, our employee database is a big problem. Because the first quarter, I found out problems in sales incentive. I don't know, this guy has been giving sales incentive for a particular Tanish store, but there is no sales clocked in his name. Or there is no target mark to him. Why? Because my databases were all wrong. One database was saying he is at the Borivili store, whereas actually he is deployed at Andheri store. Fundamentally, that is where the problem started. So therefore, the uh, 
target allocations were all sort of messed up or whatever it is. The second time we found out that we give uh, health insurance and life insurance for all retired employees also. Uh, but no one is trying to figure out whether those retired employees are still alive when I am just renewing the uh, things. Third thing, if I, I hope you don't need to go, but I see a lot of people wearing specs. So if you go to a Titan I plus, there is an optometrist who will do your uh, checking. Now we go through a franchisee model and everything. In some franchisees, we have a contract labor who is on our contract off roll sort of a thing. I pay him. Some cases it is his. He claims. Now again, that database of who oh, I have deployed, where he is working, is it that you know? In my stores, I have deployed an off roll. In his store, I have deployed an in house guy. All that thing actually came in different points of time. But at the end of the third quarter, when we raised an issue talking about employee database being a problem across multiple level, that actually they appreciated and then there was a big transformation project around that itself which happened. So just to probably give some examples and these are real life examples that we use. So this is pure dashboard. How many entities, how many audits, how many high risk issue, what's the observation issue? What is the issue with roles and responsibility, policy existence, adherence, segregation of duties, SOAs. And one more thing, if you look at it, we are talking about bright spots and hot spots. We are not only talking about what are the problems. We are also talking about on the left hand side bottom, what are good things. Now that, because our role is assurance. So therefore I need to say, listen, these 10 things are good. These three things are what we need as a focus. To give you another example, this is what I was saying. Bring, bring the themes. We said there is an invoice and payout validation. There are duplicate payments. There are duplicate. This is basically if a watch is not repairable, then we give a watch replacement advice. So the, the same advice can actually be double uh, used or whatever it is. Or my retail store attendance is a problem or I have paid excess for holding payouts. The sales incentive payouts, there was a problem. My CSR reporting, there was an issue with accounting. So if you put the themes, then they know what do I focus upon and where there is a larger problem. Or as I said, tell them at least these are my four controls issues, these are my compliance issues, these are my IT issues and these are the opportunities. So if you are able to build a theme rather than talking about 20 individual points which consolidate and happens to be just that small 2.5% of the universe, if you are able to put as a theme, it is okay that one quarter there is an issue which you presented as issue but not as a theme, but over two quarters or three quarters you find that there are these root causes which are coming up and building up. It is okay to go back and say, listen, over the three quarters, this is one theme that I am seeing, rather than focusing only on that quarter. If so, so for the for the audit committee chair or the audit committee and for a process uh, for this thing is this thing. Now in this particular thing if you start talking about a theme, if you say that listen this is a problem you need to fix it across all the locations or whatever it is. So the next time when something happens, I mean not that it is the right thing but you still have I told you so, I told you so. Okay, so that will still you may have looked at one unit which is absolutely working fine and you don't find it there. Hmm? Therefore, it is very important that when you put a plan, which I have not specifically included here, if when you put a plan, you have to very clear in our audit committee, and I had one to uh, this Tuesday. Uh, every year, our audit committee spends one full day only on the internal audit plan. One full day, which happened four days back, and there the primary discussion happens on what I am not checking, how comfortable they are with those exclusions from the audit plan for me. A good one and a half hours is spent on that. Okay, why are you not doing Sari's business? Sir, very small, don't have business. No, 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 we are planning a very big jump next year. I think you should focus now so that when it is small, I can fix the problem. Okay, why are you not checking diamond procurement? Sir, we just did it this quarter. Why are you not checking diamond procurement for our subsidiary? We just did it this quarter. And anyway, we are trying to replicate these processes. Okay, but still I would maybe, you know, keep a buffer for it in the last quarter. Then you say, okay, you are doing too little in cybersecurity. You should focus on that. 
when he said, okay, BRSR reporting. No, no, don't focus on BRSR reporting because my statutory auditors are doing. We know there is a problem. No point in you coming and doing it. So larger questions actually happen around what we are excluding. So if we were also to say, to answer your question, sir, if you were to go and say, listen, this is the universe. I can do only 40%. This 60, and this is my logic of identifying that 40%. This 60% I am missing. Are you okay? Because then they have his commitment. Otherwise, you don't know me. Sorry, I'm presuming Hindi is okay, we are in Bombay, so. Yeah. So, you didn't tell me. Otherwise, I would have told to do this. Even if you would have not asked to told, tell you that. So, make sure that your exclusions are always there. And as a point of discussion and not as an annexure. As far as senior management is concerned, they are really looking at root causing and solution. The board is looking at a bigger picture. Board is looking at what should be our interventions or the audit committee is looking at that, the pro promoter will look at what should be my interventions. The senior management fundamentally looks at root cause and solution. I'll actually come to this and although there is a slide which will come but I want to, how many people of you have heard, uh, you know, Thursday Sham ko nails nahi kaatte hain? Yeah, you all would have heard, any reason why? Sorry? Okay. <laughs> no, I will have an equally weird answer, so it's okay whatever you want to say. Uh, okay, so this is not really an answer and don't hit me uh, for this PJ, but one of the thought process is that if you cut your nails on a Thursday evening, on a Friday evening when you are parting, it will be difficult to open the chip packets and the beer cans and the coke cans. Okay. <laughs> now, why I am trying to say this is that a lot of time we go and tell people, Segregation of duties nahi hai. Aray, purchase manager ye kar rahe. Aray, uh, the storekeeper is only making the GRN and whole lot of things. The guy doesn't understand why. Nail cut diya, nail cut diya Thursday ko. Kyun? Agar usko, agar, jab tak hum kyun nahi batayenge usko. Hume bhi kya hai, we are also trained like that. Uh, not again taking any dig on any certification course or ICAI or IA or CIA or whatever it is. I'm just saying, one of the thing is, 4i principle, segregation of duties. Per wo segregation of duties, we all understand, okay, if I am taking the money, I am taking, I am making the GR and I am making the payment and everything, okay, I can do a fraud. But in each scenario, when there is a case, oh, no, no, ye segregation of duties ho gaya. A or B, ek hi admi kar raha hai. Why? What is the problem that he should not do? Unfortunately, we are, because we are so attuned, and I am telling you, I have gone through this process, so therefore, there is nothing that I was born with uh, uh, Buddha's wisdom and I'm just coming and saying it. I've gone through, I've burnt my fingers, I've burnt myself, I've got battered and bruised on this thing. And I'm purely talking from my own experience because now when I hear it and when I am now reviewing my people's work also, I say, what's the problem? Hai? Why? 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 So that's important and that's why I'm saying, so I'm going to give some examples here to say how root causing and solution helps. So this was a very classic case where this was a snacks manufacturing company and uh, it had, you know, I'm just uh, taking, let's say you, you will have these, most of the snacks, uh, uh, potato chips, you will find a green color which is that American corn and uh, cream and then you will have a blue which is masala and then you will have a red which is tomato and you will have a yellow which is classic salted or whatever it is, okay. Now this was a case where the organization and we were also noticing huge amount of sales return. When we saw huge amount of sales return, we were saying, okay, it is impacting the cost because you know the material goes and then there's sales return, I have to pick it back. Obviously, it's a three month shelf life, so if it goes, I send it only after one month, he returns it back after 15, so 50% of the shelf life gone, larger damages, larger losses, so on and so forth, and there was a huge thing. And initially, we also started with this 33% of, uh, you know, sales return, uh, with some nice pie chart saying this distributor, so much distributor, top five and everything. But the, you know, the sales head was saying, yeah, so what? And then we say, no, this could be sales dumping. And he said, sorry, I'm in a completely cash to carry business. The guy has paid me for 100 packets and therefore I have delivered 100 packets. The reason is that I have delivered 100 wrong packets or 60 wrong packets out of that, which of it is returned. So there is no sales dumping here, I'm very clear, because the person has to pay the money. The distributor will not pay a single paisa out of his pocket just so that my sales guy can earn an incentive. So then we got down, huddled, did lot of analytics, I'm talking way back, 
2010 and 11 all in Excel though. Uh, you know, every type of thing we did, location, distribution, op country, local, type of vehicle, big trucks, small trucks, cycle, everything we did and we just could not come except for one pattern which we figured out. It was that dispatches happening between 4.30 to 6.30 p.m., the scale of return was much higher than the average. That was the only aberration or outlier which came. And then if you see this picture, we were also doing a uh, CFA uh, checklist audit sort of a thing with 275 line items. Uh, but is the store open, is the CFA open at the right time, is it closed, have four guards been put, is there a frisking, you know, you, 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 all of us would have gone and done some sort of CFA or a store's uh, checklist uh, uh, adherence or a compliance, process compliance audit. In that some line item 26 or not even 26, probably 160 or 170 was saying that uh, is the percentage of CFL bulbs more than 80%. That was the question and we were consistently seeing that it was not 80 percent and the guy was scoring low but it was a low risk, low weightage point or whatever it is. But this is something, I mean you can say it's sheer good luck that we found that 4.30 to 5.30 we found this and one smart guy in our team also said, sir there has been one change, earlier every blue color chips used to go in one box, every red color packet used to go in a different box because that box was there. In order to optimize on the cardboard box stock, what they did, they printed all the four colors, not the colors but the flavor on the box and they would manually do a sketchman tick at the plant to say this is actually a yellow color packet or a blue color packet or a red color packet. Now, because of yellow bulbs, 4.30 to 6.30 because of light not being, natural light not being adequate, the guys were picking a wrong tick product. So therefore, the guy was asking for a uh, tomato flavor and we were sending him a masala flavor because of which the sale return was happening. Now that when it went as an audit observation saying that listen you did a very good thing but you have did not complement it with this particular very low priority uh, warehouse compliance activity you are having this impact. Now that and the solution was actually very simple. One simple training and conversion of 100% of bulbs. So from a 22% from a of sales return, it's sort of dipped down to a 3% or 4% in a matter of just one, one and a half months. So when we are looking at solutions and when we are talking about a problem, it is very important that we really look at a root cause and solution. I'll probably, this is just one more example, I'll probably skip it, the nail cutter question I asked you. And before I go, so I'll tell you one more thing and I do a lot of mythology reading, so there will be a lot of examples you will hear from mythology. But I'm going to again uh, pause and ask the question to uh, the team here, is that can anyone guess, okay, do people know Ravan? Yeah, Ravan was, okay, so Ravan died, I think that also in, in, in whichever story. So does people know why did he die? Why was Ravan killed? Anyone want to take a guess? Okay, if I were to say Ravan died because of a quality problem and not quality of his upbringing. Okay, Ravan died because of an actual quality problem in a business process. Surprised? Okay, so just humor me and just attempt to answer what you believe. Why did Ravan die? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Huh? Adharmi, okay, so he kidnapped someone's wife and that wise husband killed him, right? Why did he kidnap his wife? This side, anyone, I think, uh, I, I, so guys, don't worry because when I have had these conversations even within my team, not just in open public, someone has also given me examples of Yudhishthir and from Mahabharata and all in this thing. So it's okay even if you're wrong uh, in any manner. So why did he kidnap Sita? Revenge. Revenge. What revenge? Sister's nose was cut. Why was the sister's nose? Please just follow my thing. I'm asking every time a why, okay? Why was the nose cut? Yeah, she proposed Lakshman. She attacked Sita and then Lakshman cut her nose. Why did she get that, you know, why did she attack Sita? Or why, where did she get that uh, uh, 
confidence or uh, comfort because they were alone in a jungle. Why were they alone? Because they were put on exile? Why did their father send them on an exile? Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm going to go fast now because you know. Um, Dashrath had promised Kai Kai two boons and therefore she said uh, send her. So he, they sent him. But why did Dashrath agree? And why did Dashrath give her that boon? Because she saved him in a battlefield. Why did she have to save him in a battlefield? Because his chariot broke. Why did the chariot broke? Because someone did not do a quality test properly. <laughs> now, yes, this is purely a joke. Never, I don't think any of the grunts or any of the versions of Ramayana from Tulsidas, Ramcharit Manas to uh, Kambans or even Valmiki's Ramayana talks about this. But my point is that please in every work that you do, and this is why I am saying this is a stakeholder management is that if we do something internally, we are going to get this output for them. So if you please do your five whys, don't stop. And I am being very honest and guys, even today, maybe 20% of my signed reports also carry what I am going to say, but don't do this. Lack of process is not a root cause. Absence of control is not a root cause. Please go back and check your reports. And I'm not scolding you guys, I'm just saying, think about it uh, from that perspective. That we do end up, because of everything, the worst thing an internal auditor has to do is write a report. Till the time they are doing analysis, till the time they find oh my god, background likna hai, oh my god, observation likna hai. I remember, uh, it was uh, just two days before my wedding and I was still working and the guy had come to my place, my team member and I was saying, I, we were just typing a report and I said, Dick, ye maine observation likh diya hai, ye risk likh diya hai, tu recommendations likh dega. Haan, haan, kaise likhega? Oh, iska ulta likh dunga bas. SOP not there, SOP should be there. So, not really, the recommendation has to be really, and I'm, this was 20, 24 years back, but, sorry? Now also it happens. Yes, so I, I can understand guys, okay, it is very, very natural. Okay, it's very natural. You've worked for eight weeks, you've given really your, you know, you've thought, you really rackled your creative juices, you have gone and you have fought with some very horrible process owners, okay? Who will, uh, I mean, I can tell you even now, there have been cases where we say, listen, you have given this material on FOC, but you know, there is no approval and all. He says, it is not FOC because I have built him at one paisa. So you have to argue with such people also. A product of 8,000 rupees, you have built at one paisa because obviously the billing has to have some value there. But you will say, no, FOC, how can you write FOC? He will digress from the issue and get, so I understand, you guys go, we, all of us, where there is no you and we here, I here, it is all of us, go through it. But, and I'm saying, report me likh rahe ho, nahi likh rahe ho, what you're writing. If you have the answers, if you're communicating it with your senior management, if you're able to tell them that the action plan has to be, lack of SOP can be one thing, but if the action plan is, I will do a 100% conversion of CFL, okay, and put probably for the first six months an additional monitoring of verification of the ticks being the right when I'm doing, it's okay. You know? So that is where your senior management will start loving you. When it comes to process owner, it is purely engagement. Don't keep your cards to your chest. Be very open, very upfront. You will not believe on this Tuesday, coming Tuesday on 26th, I have a four hour session with our subsidiary Carrot Lane. Uh, if you've not heard about it, do Google, but also go and buy from there. Uh, um, where, what we are going to be doing is we are going to actually tell them what are the checks that we do in internal audit, because we are, they are saying, you please tell us what you do. We will do it. So you don't have to waste time, because if you do, we find a problem, we'll correct it. And you can come and check whether we have done it right or wrong. Because you are doing what we have to do at the end of the day. If there are errors which are happening, I might want to probably do something on a more frequent basis and a more online basis so that we don't have these problems. So it's a very collaborative thing. It takes time, but it has happened because we've also engaged with them like that. When you engage with them, make sure that you def basically always ask one thing. Because your process ka 
ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है ना आई गिव यून अ वेरी क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल एंड दीज एक्चुअली विलकम अगेन इन सम अदर पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रेजेंटेशन विच वी कैन स्किप देन इज दैट वी वर गोइंग फॉर आर आई केयर लॉजिस्टिक्स ऑडिट एंड लाइक एवरी वन यू नो रोल्ड अप स्लीव वो लोड क्लबिंग नहीं हो रहा है you know multiple dispatches to the same location very standard i mean from a logistics company it's other way around your company will be earning money but at least you know if they are not clubbing it they are also losing out their part of it or whatever it is but it's a very standard logistics point we were also like pehle hi data analysis karke we have a concept called day zero readiness so you know before we start the audit one month earlier itself we download all data do whatever analysis and get ready so first day itself we go and say these are exception ready but he was saying i don't care if i'm spending 2 rupees more it is the progressive lens of the customer it has to go to him on day 2 whether 20 have gone and after that i got an order and i'm making it it will go separately for me cost per delivery is not important for me the delivery turn around time of 2 days to get the spectacles to the customer is primary importance because the cost of that lens and the margin that i made is substantially higher than the additional cost that i would pay therefore we lost sight of the process kpi we should have started looking at okay how effectively can i make sure that the lens is manufactured and fit on the frame soon rather than saying clubbing load nahi kya wait karo iska sham ko 4 baje ja to raha tha are wo 4 baje nahi aayega kya aaj chala jayega agar if i if, imagine if there is a, you know ladies if a tailor of yours says that you know mai aapka uh, lehenga 22 tarikh ko dunga aur 20 tarikh ko phone karke bol deta ready hai You guys are going to like it, right? The same thing with the spectacles. I tell a customer that listen, I'm going to give you. Sometimes it backfires also because I wanted to give something to my wife on the Women's Day. He came one day earlier, and it all spoiled the show. But that's that's a separate matter. But typically, you know, if 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 you would if you would give something early, and especially like a spectacles, which obviously I'm under a discomfort otherwise without that particular thing. So it's very important that when you are engaging with them, don't keep your cards to your chest. keep your uh, understand their pros be very candid aapka kya re kya mujhe numbers mat batao don't tell me my it is two days turn around time but for me it is turn around time which is a kpi tell me that don't if it is cost per delivery reduction don't tell me it is 40% or 60% tell me it is cost per delivery so that i can work towards that so other important thing is take minimalistic time of the process owner and give him adequate time for resolution i understand it is a very big paradigm shift he will still continue to give you his response by saying that we had taken an approval one night before he will do that he or she will do that why should we only keep men as villains no uh, even there could be female uh, lady process owner they will do that keep that as a buffer but there is no point over a period of time they will understand and appreciate it एंड मेमो ये याद रखो मेमो इट इज मीट इनफ मीट ऑफन कीप मीटिंग दैम विच मुर्तुजा वॉज ऑल्सो सींग हैव कॉन्वर्जेशन विद दैम एंड वन मोर थिंग आई रिमेंबर अगेन आई एम कमिंग बैक टू माइथोलॉजी इज दैट एवरी वन हर्ड ऑफ दिस इन महाभारत कैरेक्टर कॉल्ड शिखंडी या शिखंडी वॉज अ ट्रांसजेंडर एंड अगेन रैदर दैन बिल्डिंग अप द हाइप Uh, you know shikhandi was placed in front of arjuna when they were fighting with bhishma because bhishma just could not be killed and then uh, looking at shikhandi he said he believed that she is a woman therefore he would not attack a woman so he kept his arms down and from the back then arjuna shot an arrow and many arrows and sort of killed him right that's a story what i'm trying to say is when you are going to a process owner to have a discussion figure out is there a shikhandi that you can take it's it's actually profound that i have learned from my uh, egg mistakes in the past if you are going to a controllers office okay can you take someone who has an influence let's say from the mis office or the finance side if you are going and speaking to a treasury can you take someone from the controllers team who does the bank rec and here is a guy who is dealing with the bank or whatever it is either the guy is scared of him either the guy has very much high respect for him and you are able to convince this guy sir aa jao ek meeting mein i mean it's a, it's not 
it sounds easy to say but the efforts have to be made can we do this jointly or whatever it is don't take it as I am complaining you or whatever it is but think about it when you are going to find a process owner who is as tough as Bhishma you need to find your Shikhandi and that Shikhandi can be data also that Shikhandi can be data analytics also sometimes data itself is so that you can't we can't be mujhe lagta hai ye galat hai nahi these are the 20 facts that are proving and it is very important that we give enough time for engagement I'm going to again just quickly quickly and how much time do we have Shiv? okay I have three minutes and 48 seconds so uh, let me just if I want to come back to this I'll come back so if I were to summarize audit committee focus on big picture dashboard and trends balance between assurance and value add audit committee Audit committees of government listed companies may not be focusing too much on value add, they will be looking at assurance, whereas a promoter might be looking more at value adds. Uh, senior management focus on root cause, process KPIs, KRAs, more focus on value addition and adequate focus on assurance. Usko jake ye bolna ki aapke char voucher sign nahi hai and all will be less critical. And for process owners, be very conscious of their time, take periodic inputs from them. Don't keep your cards to the chest and give them credit where it is due. Give them credit. Okay, so uh, this is just a uh, you know a suggestion for us to sort of if you can follow it. So everyone has in okay. Forget about what I'm saying here. Risk and control matrix. Anyone who doesn't know, great. Okay, this is the first more first example of a rackup. The risk was Sita will be kidnapped. The control was Lakshman Rekha. Yeah? Was the control, did the control work? No. Actually, the control worked. It was not effective. Control was working. Ravan could not come in. That was the control. But the control was not effective. Now, as internal auditors, we always have SOPs or process compliance as our part. And this is going to be an approach if you take most of your stakeholders will be more than happy. The first thing we talk about is process compliance. Yeah? So what would happen if you were reviewing this stay in the jungle process of Ram, Lakshman and Sita? You would go one evening before Sita was kidnapped and say, oh, Lakshman has drawn a line. Yes, control there, Rackham there, Sita has crossed the line. No, everything fine. Go tell the board boss everything okay, next day morning she gets kidnapped. And then Kya kar rahe the? Right? Hmm? So the next question is really look at the process effectiveness or process adequacy. Ab yaan problem kya tha? Yaan problem ye tha ki while the line was stopping Ravan to come in, it was not stopping Sita to go out. Because Sita stepped out. That is why she got kidnapped. So as internal auditors, Ideally, the next day should be, boss, you know, you have this outward in blocked, but inward out not blocked. That's the process adequacy. Oh, there's a timer, huh? Okay. So, I'll, I'll finish after this. Maybe I'll just quickly see what is the... So, when you go and tell this, your managing director or your business head will say, we should not trust our employees. Are you saying we should not trust our employees? How will Sita discharge her business responsibilities. How will she go out to the gardens, fetch roots and berries, cook for us in the night? What are you doing? Am bhooka mare kya? Just because Sita ko kidnap nahi hoga. Sita ko, agar iska fayda hai to Sita ko kidnap hi kar do yaar, usko rehne ka bhi koi fayda nahi hai. Very logical answer. That is where we need to look at the process efficiency or the control efficiency. Think about it. Does he really have to draw the line at the footsteps here? Or can he make a larger line? Can you make a bigger periphery and make sure that Sita doesn't go beyond that, someone cannot come. When I said this, everyone was very happy except for one smart kid who said, Sir, if we make a big circle, then Ravan can come from the top of the Yes, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> but anyway, if you, every audit that you do and you are reviewing your team, if you ask these three questions, have you checked compliance, adequacy and efficiency of that control? you will be able to provide what your stakeholders want. 
Okay, my last one, I'll take just one more minute. There are many slides, but I'll close it after this. Again, I'm just going to tell you one more story because it's very important. Uh, we as, all of us as internal auditors, we need to understand this. So there's this story where this small camel calf is asking her mother or his mother, uh, Mom, why do I have such horrible foot, you know? It's so ugly. If you look at the stallion there, he has such nice shaped foot and hooves and mine is like so flat. Why is it so? She says, Beta, you know, in desert, there are too many quicksands. And in physics, if there is a quicksand, you should lie down. Because if your whole weight is on a smaller area, you are likely to go down more. If you lie down, that the weight is spread over thing. So, our foot is so that we don't get, fixed, get stuck into the quicksand. She's okay. But why do I have these dirty, double layered, long eyelashes and all, you know? She says, Beta, we are in desert. There is too much of sandstorms. So, when the sandstorm comes, these eyelids, you know, make sure that the dust doesn't go in our eyes. She says, okay, then why do I have this very horrible hump on my back? You know, I look at the stallion again, such nice sleek. She says, Beta, we are in desert. For days we have to go without water. And, uh, you know, this hump stores the water for it. So then this calf says, if that is the case, what the hell are we doing in a zoo? <laughs> so the point here is, it is not what you have and want to give. It is what they want. Lord has wanting to give camel all these features because they are in desert. But the camels which are in zoo do not want it, do not need it. So when, you are, when we are offering it, can we ask that one more question to ourselves is, do they really want it? Uh, so, so does the process owner really want to know 25 controls to do these 50 activities? Or he wants something else. At the same time, can you look at alternates which ensures that you are insulated from a risk? Okay, so I had longer uh, thing, but I will probably stop because of uh, lack of time. Yeah, okay, so this is an, another startup story, so I'll, I'll leave it here. Thank you so much. So does anyone have any questions? So you'd like to yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, sure, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Any questions? So yeah. I think I said, oh, yeah, there. You can sit and speak. Yeah. Right. Big hirements, uh, being a, I'm talking about my article ship world where I was finding some queries. Deekho. Credit up to senior. Ko de do. Sir, you have to tell me something. Okay, the principal will not write it. Now, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, your height is your luck, your weight is your karma. Hai. Okay? So, at the end of the day, you will get what you are doing. If the sum of all is zero, if you are feeling that today your seniors have an insecurity Correct. because they did not identify something and you have identified, first time you may go and tell this is my finding. If they are supportive, very good. If they are not, in the longer run, give them the credit, do it 90% and say, sir, I have done help you can help Or madam, I have done something. Again, every time I, we make the men only the villain, but uh, so, you know, madam, we have done. There are, I'll tell you. Uh, in an organization where there was something which was very critical, a very senior management personnel had to do it and that person had major concerns. Uh, I mean, was not very good terms with audit or whatever. <coughs> I told him, you know, in, in, that, in the senior management meet, we were all sitting and there was this mandate. I told him, sir, I will do it for you, I will give you, you will see. He said, I will give you time. More than happy. It's okay. Because then you have sort of got an obligation from that person. Heart of heart, everyone knows I have stolen your idea. Correct. So sum of all, end of the day becomes zero. Aaj aap ek credit leke jagda kar doge, wo aage chal ke kahi aur impact karega, usse chha, de do aaj. God has another plans for me. It's not just God's destiny and it, it will and happen. Can you I mean. just repeat that height and weight concept? I like that. Height is equals to your brain. You told something. <laughs> height is equals to your brain. 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 Height is equals to your brain.
हाइट इज योर लक लक ओके मतलब आप अपनी मेहनत से हाई ऊंचा नहीं हो सकते वेट इज योर कर्मा अपनी मेहनत से कम कर सकते हो nice या ना कर का ना मेहनत करके बढ़ा सकते हो थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर वंडरफुल इंसाइट्स ऑफ द सेशन